Good evening, church. We want to welcome you to Bible study for First Baptist Church Wednesday night Bible study. Certainly unique situation that we have here, and there's nothing we can do about that right now. All things are in the hands of the Lord, and we're thankful that He's a great God in heaven who's sovereign. He knows every need uh, that we have. Let's bless His name. Let's honor His name, even in these most uncertain times, because they are uncertain and they're anxious. But there are many things that are certain, and it's the goodness of God, His kindness upon His upon us, his willingness to forgive us our sins in Christ Jesus. Those are things that we want to look to in the many, many great promises he gives us in his word. We don't have any announcements because everybody's got to stay at home. As soon as that changes, we'll have announcements for you. But we just will hope you're home and and that while you're home, you're in, in this time that you're casting your thoughts upon the Lord. You're studying your Bible in a way that you haven't in a while. Or maybe you have. It's just an opportunity to continue to do that. That you're praying often. That you're praying for your church. And uh, just, we love you. And I just want to say God bless you. And I hope that tonight's Bible study will be a great comfort to you because we're going to talk about having peace in anxious times. And uh, so if you'll get your Bible, go to Philippians chapter 4 with us. And uh, as we go there, uh, uh, get a pen, pencil, uh, some paper, write the notes down, um, and study those things over time. So let's take a moment, have prayer, and then we'll uh, have a hymn together, and then we'll get into our Bible study. So let's pray. Our great and gracious God in heaven, how we thank you, Lord, that we have this opportunity in this unique time and in this new unique way of, of, of so many things that are uncertain to come to you with great confidence knowing that you love us and that you care for us. So I pray for your blessing upon us, God. Guard our, our hearts. Guard our minds, God. Um, I know that we are anxious and we are concerned and fearful about what lies ahead just simply because we don't know. Help us to have confidence in you. And as we study your word tonight, guide our thoughts and our minds, God, as we as we cast them up on you and, and help us to think on truth and on lovely things and on wonderful things. And may we be encouraged by the gospel that Jesus Christ has died for sinners just like us. And let us have confidence, God, that you stand with open arms ready to receive anyone who by faith would call upon the name of Jesus Christ. It's, and things that happen like this, you know, they're meant for us to draw near to you. And so may all of us do that. Have mercy upon us, God, upon our country, upon our land, upon the whole earth, God. As this virus just washes up over the, over the whole earth. We pray, God, you'd spare our, uh, our people, that you would get rid of this virus, that we, we want your will to be done. That's the main thing. But, oh, God, would you, would you relieve us of this and, and, and heal our land, God. And uh, we pray that you might forgive us our sins and everyone would search for the Savior and for Jesus Christ. God, we want to again just come to you and say that we ask these things in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is a great, great Savior. This we pray in Jesus' name. And amen. Well, let's take just a moment and sing a hymn together, and then we'll get into our Bible study. So uh, enjoy this hymn. Sing along with us as we worship. Hey! 
right, so now that you're back from the hymn and, and worship with your family, and I hope you were encouraged by uh, the hymns and how wonderful that they are in times like these to sing and to be comforted uh, in song by God's Word and just to sing back to Him um, uh, he, how wonderful He is and of the promises that He makes for us. But take your Bibles and turn with me to Philippians chapter 4. And uh, we're going to read verses 4 to 9. This is a passage that so many people will go to in times like these to bring comfort. And this is my, my job to you, the church that uh, I'm in charge of as pastor, to bring comfort to you. So we're going to go to an oft a passage that's often given at this time. But nonetheless, it's very important. So Philippians chapter 4, and let's just read verses 4 through 9. And here's what God's Word says. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our Lord stands forever. All right. As we have all know right now all too well, these are uncertain times. Um, anxious times, time like we feel like we've, you know, I've, t I've talked to people in their 80s, and this is a time they, they've never gone through anything like this. We don't know what the future holds. Uh, this event has changed everything for us in the same way that uh, uh, Pearl Harbor changed things for people in that generation, or that um, uh, the Kennedy assassination, or 9-11 changed uh, for us, uh, we will look back at this time in our lives as a defining moment, a changing moment. And yet at this time, uh, the way the future will look going forward, it's unknown to us. We just simply do not know. How will our way of life be changed? Um, I can tell you this, that if our hope is in the economic system, that we have in place, which I think is probably the best in the world, and uh, that's of no consequence. But if that's our hope, then we have a lot to be worried about. If it's in going here and there, if it's in living a leisurely life, uh, uh, taking trips all the time and, and visiting different places, if it's in enjoying sports, leisurely activities, things of that nature, and there's a lot to be worried about. But we as Christians have an unshakable hope. And we should reflect on that in times like these. And maybe the cares of life had caused us to forget that. Maybe we were lulled to sleep. But with this virus, God has awakened His slumbering people. And he's left us with only one option. And I'm thankful that God has really left his people with only one option. That way we don't have three, four different things that's possible for us. We have, as God's people, only one real option. And that's for us to cast our cares upon him, to be utterly dependent upon our God in heaven. Oh, we have no other recourse. So what we want to do now is talk about having peace in anxious times, because that's what this passage does for us. Now, before I get into the main body of it, I simply want to tell you the writer of Philippians is the Apostle Paul. Uh, we love Paul. Uh, he's such a wonderful, wonderful man. God used greatly, gave us his word. God spoke through Paul for us. And when he wrote the letter to the Philippian church, do you know where Paul was? He was in jail. He was chained to a Roman guard 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That was his life. He didn't know if he was going to live or die. He had no idea. He didn't know if his prison stay was going to end in death or if he was going to be released. 
to move on. And yet he writes about casting all your cares upon God. And that's important for us to know. So let's look at several different points in our Bible study. First of all, uh, let's read verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. So first of all, rejoice in the Lord. When? Always. Always rejoice in the Lord. In every circumstance, in every trial, in every tribulation, always find a way to rejoice in the Lord. You know, it's so easy to give in to, to uh, every circumstance if you and 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 be and be lost in those things and, and fearful, but it's also so easy to rejoice as a Christian in every circumstance if you simply know and remember what God has done for you. That's something that can't be taken away from you, and that's what we want you to be mindful of. You know, happiness is is, is about events, right? Joy is about things that are unchanging, um, and that's what's important. You want to rejoice. You want to rejoice, and that takes thinking on unchanging things. So no matter where you are and in what circumstance you are, these are things that never change. Think of this. You, if, if, if we think about what has God done. He's given us salvation. He's forgiven us our sins. He, Jesus Christ has reconciled us to our great God in heaven. God has adopted us as His sons and daughters. We, Jesus redeemed us. He bought and paid for us with His precious blood. We have eternal life. We have an inheritance that God gives to us. We have victory over death. And we have so much more um, as Christians, so many wonderful things that absolutely cannot be taken away from us. And that's why we can rejoice in every circumstance. We have a virus washing over our country, washing over the world, and we are still able to rejoice in moments of uncertainty. We are able to rejoice. Secondly, and this is really challenging right now, I'm, I'm not giving you something that I... I think is easy for you to do. I completely understand this is hard. But this is what we're told. Be anxious for nothing. Look at verse 6 again. Be anxious for nothing. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Um, be anxious for nothing. Now listen, I know that's hard. It's difficult, but this past Sunday, we just studied about God's sovereignty. Um, that was what the whole thing was all about. And then Paul, he's our writer here. He writes so much in the Bible about God's sovereignty. Uh, he wrote about it all the time. God is the, and I'm going to give you two, just really quick. God is the author and the finisher of our faith. And he purposes all things to come to pass. If you can know those two things about him, that covers everything. He's the author, he's the finisher of your salvation, and he purposes all things to come to pass. We, when we worry, so when we worry, we, it in, when we worry incessantly, it undermines our faith in the Lord. And look, I know it's hard right now. It's hard for me. It's hard for you. The uncertainty is is difficult, you know, knowing what's going to happen in the future, where we'll be one month, two months, one year, two years from now. And, and uh, um, but what you can know, uh, what can this take from you? This is, this is what we need to ultimately come to. What can this take from you that really matters? Now, it can take some things from you that, that are important to you. But it can't take away the things that matter most. They, it can't. There are promises God makes that He will fulfill and He will see them through and that can't be taken away. And I want you to know that, again, I remind you, that Paul tells us not to be anxious for anything. And he says that writing to us from prison where he didn't know what would happen to him next. So he's not telling us uh, something as he writes in an, an ivory tower somewhere. He himself had been beset with difficult 
hard things in life. He didn't know what was happening to him. And then he writes to the Philippian church, uh, be anxious for nothing, cast all your cares upon God. Trust in God, and that will give you joy. Thirdly, what's the remedy for our anxiety? We have a remedy here that Paul gives us. Look in verse 6 again. Um, In everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Prayer is the remedy for our anxiety. Take everything to God in prayer. Everything. That's your remedy. That's the remedy for any anxiety that you have. In prayer, we are going to the God who is able. He is able. Um, I want you to notice he gives you three parts of prayer here. Three important parts in prayer. The first one supplication. That's going to God for your needs. You know, God supply me for my needs. What is it that you lack? What is it that you need? Now that may be a physical a thing. You know, Lord, I, I need to... Uh, I need my food for the day, and we should always ask God for our daily bread. Um, uh, It may be something else. We may need wisdom. We may need courage. We may need strength. Uh, There are lots of things that we need. You go to God with supplication, asking God for help, and and then you approach Him with confidence because He answers His prayer. He answers your prayer according to His will, and that's the way you pray. You pray into God's will. Uh, Secondly is thanksgiving. Always work to be thankful in prayer. Always look for what's bright in your life, for what's beautiful, how God is working for you. His blessings, they are abundant. And then thirdly, for requests, that's what he asks. Tell God specifically what you need him to do. You know, don't talk in vague generalities. You know, tell God specifically, Lord, this is what I need and, and this is how I'd like you to work in my life and in this person's life and in my loved one's life. Um, take that to him in that way and uh, and, and take those requests and uh, be specific. All right, the fourth thing. Uh, so we, we have then uh, to rejoice in the Lord always. This is, you know, as we talk about peace in anxious times, uh, we want to rejoice in the Lord always. Um, and we want to be anxious for nothing. We want to pray because that's the remedy for anxiety. Fourthly, the result of this prayer, the result of prayer is the peace of God. Look at verse 7 again. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God. All surpassing peace is, uh, is what belongs to the believer who the believer who takes these things in prayer, a peace that guards your heart and your mind. It keeps you focused on Christ and not on your anxiety. That's what happens when you pray often, when you take everything to God. You're focused on Christ and not your anxiety. You have gone to the God who can. He is able. You cast all your cares on Him. In the stormy seas of life, the Christian may have the peace of God washing over him. Um, on Sunday, you know, just to reflect back on Sunday, and we talked about the sovereignty of God, and we talked about uh, the Roman lady Perpetua, uh, who was um, uh, sentenced to death. You know, she was a, a Christian martyr. I think it was in the 200s, and uh, she wouldn't renounce Christ. She wouldn't uh, offer incense to the gods, and the judge passed sentence on her and gave her the death sentence. And this is what she said. We were condemned to the beasts. We returned to the prison in high spirits. How is that possible? How is it possible? Well, it's not possible if, you're, if you don't have the promises that are in Christ Jesus, is it? There'd be nothing but despair. But we have a God who gives us unsurpassing peace in Christ Jesus so that even if our lives, even if our lives are on the line, We have unsurpassing peace in Him. Christ suffered. Christ died for us. His blood purchased our righteousness. It purchased our eternal life. He is our faithful high priest. The Father is pleased to do what Jesus asks concerning us. It's an unending confidence that we have in Jesus Christ. And so that's what prayer does. 
It takes us to the God who can, and we focus our thoughts and our minds upon Him continually, and that gives us peace uh, in anxious times. And then fifthly and finally, we must fix our minds on God-honoring, Christ-exalting things. Look at verse 8. So fix your mind on God-honoring, Christ-exalting things. Verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Now listen, this is more than just thinking positively. A lot of people tell you think positively. You don't have to... You don't have to have a, a Christian tell you to think positively. It's kind of common sense. If you think uh, on you know, positively about things, then things are going to be somewhat better for you. But that's not at all really what Paul's saying here. Um, it's much more than that. Um, it's much more than just a psychological trick. This is substantive. There are eight things he goes over here for you to fix your minds on. Um, and, and I'm going to go over them, and I'm, they're going to be really quick, so write with a pen as quick as you can if you're taking notes. The first one is think on whatever is true. Whatever is true, think on it. Now, what is this referring to? It's referring to Scripture and God's promises. Those are true things. Dwell on those things uh, from Scripture, from Holy Scripture. Dwell on God's Word. Dwell on the promises that God makes for His people. The second thing is um, is 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 uh, think on things that are honorable. Uh, think on noble, lofty, dignified things. Things of high morality. Get our minds out of the gutter. That's what that means. Think on honorable things. Thirdly, think on things that are just or right. These are holy things. These are things that pertain to God's laws. You want to think on those things. Fourthly, think on pure things. You know, impure things. They've been diluted in some way um, with moral corruption. So we want to guard ourselves against hypocrisy and of impure living and, and speech. Guard ourselves uh, of those things. So think on pure things. Think on, fifthly, whatever's lovely. That which is, and whatever's lovely is that which is sweet, that which is gracious, that which is gener generous. It's that which dignifies rather than that which um, defiles. Uh, sixthly, uh, it is uh, th to think on things that are commendable. Whatever is spoken of highly uh, or is respectable in the eyes of God, you want to think on that. So those are things that are commendable. Um, you, so you want to guard against coarse jesting, for instance. You want to think on things that are highly spoken of, those things that are respectable in the eyes of God. Seventhly, uh, think on things that are excellent, that which is excellent. So uh, what is excellent? Well, God's character is excellent. Love what He loves. Hate what He hates. Dwell on His character. Uh, that's, that's important. And then eighthly and finally on that, anything that's worthy of praise. That's what you want to cast your thoughts on, think on, dwell on. What would please God? What would glorify Him? That's what you want to think of. What would He approve of? Think on those things and then do them. Um, that's what it needs to lead to, is a doing of those things. So those are eight things that you can think of. And I know it was probably a lot uh, for us to dwell on, uh, but here's how I want to close. That such uncertain times, they bring about anxiety. Each one of us have experienced, has experienced uh, fearfulness, anxiety, and uncertainty in these last uh, few days, uh, weeks. And so here's your guard against it. You know what? I I'm going to concede something here. You may not be perfect in this, and I may not be perfect in uh, in guarding against uh, anxiety. It may be difficult sometimes. Um, you'll probably have moments. I mean, there may be moments that come upon you where fear seems to get the best of you. But what I've given you here, what, what Paul's given you, excuse me, what Paul's given you here and what we've talked about in this Bible study is a road map for facing any crisis, any this crisis and any other crisis in your life, because this isn't the only crisis that you'll have. Uh, there'll be others. There'll be other hardships. But this is a roadmap in how to deal with to deal with those things. Uh, and look at how this section ends in verse nine. 
and the God of peace will be with you. Uh, think on these things. Cast your cares upon Him. Rejoice in the Lord. Pray without ceasing. And think on those good things. And the God of peace will be with you. Well, church, I love you. And I miss you. I look forward to getting back together with you. And uh, it'll be soon. Soon enough. In the Lord's time. Let's trust in Him. Let's look for opportunity to share Christ and be a witness. These are unique times. People's ears and eyes are open in a way that they aren't ordinarily opened. They are attuned to looking for God. Except, except God isn't lost, is He? Um, he's not lost at all. We're the ones... If you're not a Christian, you're lost. Uh, but this God calls you, if you never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, He calls you. Um, crisis, hardship, difficulty, makes you realize you're dependent upon the Lord and you need Him. So trust in Him. Trust in Jesus Christ. Come to Him. He suffered and died for your sins upon a rugged cross at Calvary. Uh, may the Lord Jesus Christ be glorified in your life. May you believe upon His name. And may God bless you.